Hello and welcome to section 4.4 on indefinite integrals. In section 4.3, the fundamental theorem of calculus gave us a connection between integration and differentiation. In part 1, we saw that differentiation and integration are reversals of one another. That is, the derivative of the definite integral from a constant a to a variable x of f of t is f of x. In part 2, an antiderivative was used to compute a definite integral. Clearly, antiderivatives are fundamental to integration. We formalize this relationship with the definition of indefinite integrals. The indefinite integral of a function f of x is the general antiderivative of f. We use the term definite for a definite integral because it represents the net area of a defined region. That is, given the bounds a and b and a function f, the area of interest is defined. The term indefinite is used for antiderivatives because they represent the area of a yet to be defined region. We have the function, but the bounds have not been specified. In fact, from the Fundamental Theorem of Calculus Part 2, the indefinite integral evaluated at x equals a and x equals b is used to find the definite integral from a to b. Take for example the function f of x equals sine x times cosine x. We don't have a product rule for antiderivatives, so it would be difficult for us to calculate the indefinite integral of f. However, I know that the function 1 half sine squared of x is an antiderivative of f. And you can verify this by differentiation. Taking the derivative and using the chain rule, we find that the derivative of 1 half sine squared of x is f of x. It may seem trivial, but the constant c is crucial. There does not exist a unique antiderivative for a function. Functions have the possibility of being an antiderivative without appearing to fit the model of 1 half sine squared x plus c. In fact, another antiderivative of f is negative 1 half cosine squared of x. How can this be? Well, cosine squared is 1 minus sine squared. So negative 1 half cosine squared can be written as 1 half sine squared x minus 1 half. Here, c is negative 1 half. Don't forget the c. We're dealing with a general antiderivative, not a specific antiderivative, when we take an indefinite integral. What we've learned about integrals from the fundamental theorem is summarized in the net change theorem. The integral of a rate of change is the net change. We have numerous examples of rates of change. The rate of change of position is velocity, the rate of change of charge is current, the rate of change of cost is marginal cost, and so on. For example, if it is known that a dam is leaking at a rate of 2,000 plus 140t gallons of water per minute from time t equals 0 to t equals 9 minutes, the net amount of water which is leaked from the dam over the 9 hours, over the 9 minutes, is the integral from 0 to 9 of dv dt. The indefinite integral, or the antiderivative, is v. So the net change of water, the total number of gallons leaked over the 9 minutes, is 23,670 gallons. In summary, the definite integral of a function f is the general antiderivative of f. Currently, we are very limited in our ability to calculate indefinite integrals. This is due to the fact that there is no product nor quotient rule for antiderivatives. However, in our next section, we will acquire a technique which will allow us to undo the chain rule. That is, undo differentiation of composition of functions.